I'd never do anything that stupid. If I did, my career would be over. Um, Lucas. Hmm? If you were a Disney princess, who would you be? Cinderella, because she broke, homie. She just she represent me. My God. I'm late, I know, but you know what? I got here eventually. There's too many things happening right now. But I, I was very excited about uh, Scott Pilgrim Takes Off. I am very excited about it. I finally finished it and I can't wait to talk to you about it. So I did an episode one and two review. This is just gonna be a full season review. Let's just get down to the nitty gritty. If you thought this was a direct adaptation of the graphic novels, the movie, you're wrong. It's neither of those things. It's a remix. But what is a remix? We're gonna answer that question and I'm gonna explain the synopsis and how it broke my brain when this show started in the most beautiful way. I heard it was a remix before I watched it. I literally responded by saying, what does that mean? <laughs> like I didn't know what the heck that meant it was going to be. I thought I had an idea from watching the trailers and then I watched the show and I was like, oh, <laughs> I see why they said a remix. So let's talk about that. So the synopsis. So everything plays out the same until basically the first fight against Matthew Patel in the series. So in this first fight against the evil exes or one of them, Scott actually loses the fight which is obviously very different from everything else that we know. I was like, what is happening? He is the one in this version of the story who becomes change. They have a whole funeral for him where he is literally changed in a coffin. But it turns out that he might not really be dead. And so this becomes a kind of non murder mystery of like who killed or rather I guess who didn't kill Scott and you know, what the heck happened to him and where did he go? and why did this happen and who's behind it? And Ramona basically goes on an investigation to figure it out. She basically rollerblades through her dreams and in doing that, like finds out that Scott's alive. And so she's trying to figure out who's behind it. And during her journey, her investigation, she's forced to face her own evil exes and basically her own self and her own trauma. And even sometimes as a result, she is forced to fight her evil exes as a way to sort of move through her trauma and deal with her own baggage. In doing this, she forges new bonds and she basically ends up figuring out somewhat what happened to Scott. Scott, it turns out, has actually been teleported into the future. And this is done by his future self who has basically kind of kidnapped him. And he's attempting to prevent Scott, young Scott, from ending up with Ramona, young Ramona. Because he actually believes that Ramona and the turmoil and uncertainty of their relationship is basically something that has ruined his life in the future. In the end, instead of Scott having to fight Ramona's evil exes, although he does try to do so, instead of him having to do that to win her, it's really about kind of every character in the show fighting to learn about themselves and move forward in their lives so that they can all be healthier and happy people. It's really about like how when we fight other people, we might be doing that to like escape the issues of ourselves and really conflict comes from a very internal place. What a great lesson, especially I think in this time period that we're living in where things can get so volatile, where everyone's just ready to fight because everyone has so much unresolved stuff that they're not willing to see in themselves. So it's really about taking a look at yourself and dealing with your, your own stuff so you can just be like cooler. Basically, I would say this is Scott Pilgrim grown up. Let's talk a little bit about some of the things that I loved. There's kind of one thing, I guess, that I'm not sure how I feel about. So we'll talk about that at the end. Yeah, but most of it I loved. Yeah, it's basically Scott Pilgrim grown up, which I really love. I know there's a lot of people that didn't like it because of that, but for a majority, most people did love this series. It's got, I think, a 96% on Rotten Tomatoes at the time of this recording. People really thought the series was cool. And I gotta say, I think it earned it. It's just got fantastic writing. I think this is really Brian Lee O'Malley going back to the story and these characters and kind of thinking about like, what, what does he wanna say now with these characters? Like, what would he do differently if he were to retell this story? And I think it gives us a more rich, a more deep, and just a really 
really beautiful story that still stays true to a lot of the characters in it, to all the characters in it, really. Scott Pilgrim Takes Off is really more like Ramona Takes Off, to be honest. She takes off from like everyone she's ever loved. Although I guess Scott does take off in episode one when he literally disappears for most of the series. I kind of loved that shift because I do feel like Ramona in the original story um, or especially, you know, in the movie, I feel like she gets kind of less to do. And so it's kind of nice to see that shift and see all the characters get more to do in general. And it also really shows what the absence of Scott does to this plot, how impactful that is, how, so he still has a lot of meaning in the show because his absence literally changes everything. And how, as a result, we actually get a focus on a lot of other characters and sort of their, their stories and their connections to each other and what they're going through. And I loved that. It's really, really true to the characters. And I think one of my favorite parts of the show, Ramona's fight against Roxy Richter, her one of her evil exes from her, her like bi-curious period. And just a lot of the stuff that they have to deal with. I think just as someone as well, that's like bi, this idea of Roxy feeling abandoned by Ramona, we really get to deal with like a lot of the exes trauma as well <laughs> for how Ramona was kind of not a great partner and really left them hurting. And it, so it makes sense why they become these evil exes because they really feel slighted by Ramona and, and they're all still kind of obsessed with her, I think as a result, because they haven't gotten through their trauma. It's, no one has gotten through their trauma. So they have like a, a literal physical fight and Ramona basically apologizes to Roxy for not saying goodbye and leaving the way she did. And Roxy has to like confront how much hurt that was to basically feel like they had a relationship that almost never existed. Which I gotta say, as someone who is bi and has also like been involved with other people, you know, that are bi, it can be sometimes confusing territory. And there are many times where you honestly feel like you don't exist. And so seeing that experience through Roxy was like, oh, it just like hurt my heart <laughs> to see another character go through that um, crisis. So yeah, to feel like basically Roxy gets erased because of her um, sexual identity was like, there's a lot of heavy stuff in here. There's a lot of stuff that made me feel a lot of feels. And when I talk about it, I'm gonna be feeling the feels again. So I'm gonna apologize in advance if I tear up or cry because this honestly was an emotional show for me, which also speaks to how strong the writing is. I also love that we get justice for Knives in this show. Knives gets so much to do. And she's one of my favorite characters in Scott Pilgrim. So I was really happy to see that for her and really happy to see Scott also own up to everything at the end and for Knives to also come into her own and like sort of evolve past Scott, which we do get, but we really get it almost in a deeper way. I love her discovering music. I love her going on that journey with the band, with the sex bob -ombs, And I just thought it was um, really cool and really beautiful. And like, yay, justice for Knives. Also all the references back to the movies, the world, the, the graphic novels, like, they really have a lot of cool references to stuff in this show. Video games, um, there's references to movies, pop culture, real places in Toronto, real Canadian businesses. <laughs> Second Cup became First Cup. I don't know if that's because Second Cup didn't want to be in the show or Netflix didn't want to pay them, but there's a lot of really cool stuff that honestly, as someone who's also a Torontonian, this is part of the reason why I also really love um, Scott Pilgrim as someone that lives in Toronto and has a very passionate love of my city, even though sometimes I also kind of hate my city, but I think that's just the city, that's the city love, you know? You can't love a city without sometimes hating it. <laughs> it's not perfect, but we love it anyways. That's Toronto. Just talking from a technical perspective, the animation in this show, the music in this show, phenomenal. Like, hands down, I was blown away by the animation when I watched the first episode and it carried throughout the show. At no point does the quality and animation drop. It stays solid throughout. I also really want to go back and I want to watch it. I watched it originally with the dub, uh, with the movie cast, which was phenomenal. And I love that they were able to get everyone to come back. I said this in my previous episode one and two review, but my thoughts initially watching it were no wonder they were able to get everyone back. I bet they just sent them the script and then they all signed on because the script is freaking amazing. 
I would, if someone sent me this script, I would be like, I will do this for free. Like that, the script is so good. And apparently that is exactly what happened. So <laughs> I nailed that when I talked about it in my review. And I'm so glad that I was right about that because yeah, I mean, that's a good way to onboard your talent again is just send them that script and get them see how much fun they're gonna have and how much they get to play. And you can tell, I think almost everyone that was involved in this show really had a lot of fun with it. It's just, it feels like a labor of love and I love that. Also, shout out to my my reference, my Back to the Future reference with Ramona and her rollerblades and being able to time travel by going to 88 miles per hour. And then also another callback to the fact that because she's American, she doesn't know what miles is in kilometers. Like, and so she gets to say that line and it also makes sense. And I was just like, this show, I love this show. I love Scott Pilgrim. One thing I do have to do is I have to go back and I have to read all the graphic novels and I wanna, I, I don't know if I should wait till all the color editions are out. I'm not sure if they're all out yet, but that's something I'm going to do as well. So that's the one thing I don't have a lot of perspective on. I do know the story and I know people that have read it. So I've talked to some people about it as well, but um, that's something I wanna go back and read. And I understand why for some people, this was a bit disappointing because they really wanted to see that version of the story come to life. They wanted to see the graphic novel jump off the page. But I respect the fact that each version of this is very, is like a different retelling of the story based on where, you know, O'Malley was at the time. I think that's really cool. It ends with a thing that I'm not as big a fan of. And that is kind of a teaser for season two, where it seems like Gideon Graves, or of course, Gordon Goose, as he is known now and as he was known originally in his past, in his origin story, might be trying to do something to mess with stuff or manipulate people or like, I wouldn't say get revenge because I feel like even he gets a happy ending. Everyone gets a happy ending. That's what I love about it. So I don't know if they're gonna do a season two, but I will say, I'd be interested to see what they do, but I feel like it's so complete. It really doesn't need a season two. I love that it ends on the note of Ramona going through this journey and basically wondering if she should be with Scott because of all the pain that they see in their future and just choosing to accept herself and through that be able to love Scott just as they are without really thinking about who they're going to become or worrying about that future because she has to go through this journey of realizing she's always been running away from love and that in order for her to accept it, understanding that it's not gonna be perfect. She has to love herself, understanding that she isn't perfect. And I mean, I don't wanna say that I'm Ramona Flowers because I don't think I am Ramona Flowers, but the idea of how flawed these characters are, how none of them are perfect, and in the end, they all have to confront themselves and really love themselves and accept themselves. I mean, that's powerful, man. That is like, I just feel so seen in my journey as an adult and getting to this place, coming from like a teenager to a young adult to just an adult now in my life that I think I still struggle with that. But it's, it's this idea of accepting yourself as you are and not judging the flaws too harshly. Just being kind to yourself and also owning up to the flaws when they're there. And that is powerful. My final thoughts, I would give this show 10 out of seven evil exes, because I think we also have to add in, obviously Envy Adams is another evil ex that I don't think gets uh, enough love. Um, and Ramona and Scott are also kind of evil exes, you know? So I think we gotta add those in. You know who I don't think will ever be an evil ex? Knives. Knives is just great. Knives is just the best. But yeah, I feel like uh, I love how every character just is so flushed out and they're so deep. It really is a, a series that ended on a beautiful note and where I feel like these characters were really seen and became very real people for me. Even though this show is very goofy, it's real ridiculous. And yet it's probably the most grounded version of this story that I have seen. Remix, if you will, whatever that means. That's it for me, friends. Until next time, stay nerdy. Bye.